very much, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and also uh, appreciate the, uh, the previous speaker for uh, keeping his remarks brief. And I note, in fact, somebody else uh, wishes to get into the debate, so I will also try to uh, be brief. I, I would like to first of all just put on the record that actually I think communication is incredibly important as a Member of Parliament and as a former marketing manager I perhaps know more than many the benefits of, uh, of good communication and those of us that oppose this allowance are not saying that MPs shouldn't be taking it as an important part of their job to make sure that they're in touch with the constituents that they're reporting back and that they're making sure that people in the constituencies are engaged in politics, far from it. The issue that I have with this is actually the, the, the cost that it's going to incur on the taxpayer. I've already, through interventions, um, expressed the, my disappointment that this is going to cost an extra £6 million just in terms of the communications allowance, with potentially an additional million pounds in increased postage costs, which is £7 million additionally that the taxpayer is going to have to bear the brunt of. But good communication with constituents does not always have to be costly. We talked earlier about the technology and the leaps forward in email communication and websites, which I have to say are a particularly cost-effective way of, of keeping in touch with people. Uh, it does mention this communication alliance can be used for websites, but uh, at my website, which I actually pay for personally, I think costs about £15 a month. So it's hardly a huge amount that uh, that, that basic technology costs these days. Of course, local visits, which MPs uh, often uh, partake on Fridays and the weekends, is another way of communicating face-to-face -face with constituents. And indeed, uh, dare I say, even going back to the, the good old days of knocking on doors to di communicate directly uh, with individuals uh, is perhaps one of the most potent ways of, uh, of engaging people with politics. And of course there's a role for leaflets as well, perhaps as a Liberal Democrat in particular I would say this, uh, and I've spent many a happy hour delivering leaflets and will be doing much of that over the next few weeks as well. Um, I, I do enjoy delivering leaflets, it's very good exercise. Um, but, but I would argue that, that there's actually a really important role for political parties in funding political leaflets. Now, it is true that many of us do send out an annual report uh, from a parliamentary expenses, and I think there's a role for that. But to increase that by £10,000, when actually there's already adequate uh, provision available within our incidental expenses provision, I don't think we need to uh, increase this further. We should look at the cases where members, uh, as has been touched on before, have problems with their office rent costs, which mean they can't use the current uh, expenses to fund this. But to say as a blanket increase of £7 million for every single member, even those that aren't finding this uh, a problem, £7 million in total for the members in this House, um, that I think that is just far too excessive and, uh, and we do not need to be doing so. But I'd just also like to raise the point about the timing of this, because uh, actually one of the points made in the report, which I think is a good point, and if I was going to be pragmatic about this, where it to be introduced may well be the case, the, the report suggests that actually there is a good case for combining the communications allowance with the allocation of prepaid stationery in one allowance. While this seems attractive in the long term, the financial and administrative difficulties to be overcome would delay unduly the introduction of the communications allowance. All I would say is, what's the rush? The Honourable Member for uh, uh, North West Hampshire mentioned the SSRB review. Why couldn't we let them come to a conclusion about this and ask them to look at the issue? Why do we need to rush this forward? Uh, some members might speculate the forthcoming general election may be a, a factor in this. And, uh, and unfortunately, I think that it's, uh, it's, it's not required. Uh, I will draw my march for uh, a close uh, because I do know that somebody else does wish, wish to get in and speak briefly in the debate. Uh, but I do urge honourable members to oppose this allowance.